last lesson was an introduction to the modeling tools in the engine. Today we're gonna dive deeper into these tools and specifically the shapes. If you click on a box, you're gonna see all these nice options on the right. We have three output types. We have static meshes, volumes, dynamic meshes. Volumes and dynamic meshes are things we're going to cover in future. They're not important now, so we're gonna focus only on static meshes. Click here, you have less options to work with. In every basic shape we have, we have the width, depth, height, sphere gut radius. We're gonna create all these options in a moment. So let's go back to box. Keep it 100, 100, 100. Let's make one here, all right, with all the default settings. Click accept to create it. Click on the box again, and let's add some divisions, subdivisions here. We spoke about that as well. If you want to see the subdivisions while you're creating your mesh, you have an option here, show wireframe. So when you click here, you're gonna see nice little wireframe on the box. Trust me, it's nice. And we have options to how we're going to position our mesh. So when we click on create, you see the pivot here. It's like in the top button of the middle button of the mesh. We can change that. So the pivot based on your needs you can choose the base, you can choose center. So now the pivot is in the center, as you can see here. And we also have top based on how you're creating or your needs. You have three options to place your pivot. When I just click on box and I know my base pivot, so wherever I snap my box, it would be there. And we have also target surface. So on scene, wherever you place your mesh, it will be placed like so. It will follow your mouse based on the meshes you are hovering above. You also have another option, which is the ground plane. If you always want to create your meshes on the ground plane, they will be created here and <laughs> he wants to say hello he can't help it look at the camera and say hello hello so sphere cylinder give me a second because this guy is funny All right sphere output type static mesh volume with just static mesh radius you can make it big you can make it even bigger and so on we spoke about that in the last lesson so let's switch now to cylinder more exciting stuff we can increase the radius or decrease it so if you're making column if you're making light source and then uh these are very nice primitives to block out things so i would like do this set the height for like 400 units add a box here do this and reduce the number of faces and i like to navigate you know when you right click you would look around asdw to move around so sometimes it might be tricky ah oh, this on ground plane let's not forget that and look at that we kind of have a lamp here it's not a lamp but getting there some of the other options we have we have the ability to assign material on our meshes directly so they would have some sort of material when we create them we also can change the uv scale so i'm going to go back to box to explain the uv scale set this to 100 100 100 make a box click accept and change this back to something like 500 by 500 by 500 and now the uvs are different and if you want to assign the same texture without changing how much tiling you have then we need to change the uv scale to something like 5 if 400 by 404 and so on let's go to con get on with it look what type of shapes we have so i'm gonna increase the radius increase the height reduce the number of slides this looks like a nice hat <laughs> Let's put it here. Yeah. Torus. Let's make it a nice little donut. Changing the major and minor radiuses to create donut or torus shape. The word space UV scale. If we enable this, the UV scale will be relative to the word space. This means objects of different sizes created with the same UV scale have the same average texel size. So if you don't want to change the UV scale so much when you are creating your meshes, click accept and let's create now a box and let's enable this as well. Click accept, click cylinder, sphere, sorry, 
pick except in a way these guys here have the same textile density here they are kind of stretched but if we look at the boxes here and compare them with the box they are in a way very similar so this will make it easier for us to assign our textures the arrow it's a nice arrow you can make it not an arrow if you increase the shaft radius so let's decrease the shaft radius you can click here on reset the property of this for the default value you also have the option to create a rectangle so this one is nice because it's just one face two triangles and i use it sometimes when i want to create displacement textures we're gonna cover that in future so it's just one face and you can increase the subdivisions on this a lot if you like let's show the wireframe sometimes you may see wireframe if not appearing you need to turn on and off these settings we also have the option to create a desk so it's the same as a rectangle just a, a face basically no 3d mesh so it's just a 2d plane and one of my favorites is to create stairs so if you click and to place a stair this was pain i'm glad they added stairs so now we can define the number of steps say 20 the step width 2 or 500 height for each step so 10 units which is 10 centimeters and you can change the depth so it's so easy now to create stairs in the engine and we also have linear stairs we can have floating stairs so without the box that would uh, close them so linear floating we have curved stairs which is nice as well and we have spiral stairs which is also curved but without the lower part i'm going to create the same stairs again and i'm going to change the polygroup model from per face to per shape and i'm going to create the same stair again and this applies on all of these guys from per shape now to per quad and create it now if you go to poly edit on the first uh on the first stairs that was uh per shape or oh, per face sorry so let's do that Click on the stair first or any static mesh to enable the options we want to choose from here. Poly edit, we can see each face or yeah, in a way each face, not this, I, this is a poly group at this point, got its own poly group so we can select this and change it. Now if we select the other stair which is per shape and go to poly edit, we can notice that it's highlighted in green when we just hover over it and there is no way we can edit these individually. Now of course if we just go to triangle edit, we can do that but here it will select the triangles um, individually and it's kind of pain so poly edit is nice. Now if we select this and go and this option was per quad so click here go to poly edit you're gonna see here it's nice just like per face but here we have all of the quads and if you select a quad a shape and then press shift you will select more quads and you can move them around now i'm gonna click cancel all right i'm gonna stop the tutorial here today we took a look at the shapes in the next tutorial we're gonna take a look at creating custom shapes and these are nice for so many reasons now if you have any questions if you want me to model something specific if you want to challenge me i challenge you to challenge me tell me what i want or what you want me to model in unreal engine and we're gonna we're gonna do it i hope i won't regret this subscribe so you can see the next video and i'll see you guys soon also subscribe for haroon cheers